Hey guys, and welcome back to my Making Ultimate Tic-Tac-Toe in Minecraft series. Last episode I covered logic gates. In this video, I plan on designing combinational logic that will make use of those gates. If you remember from last video, I showed how logic gates function. Part of this involves truth tables. I said that every gate could be described with a truth table. This can go the other way as well, specifically that every truth table can be created with a collection of logic gates. For the next few minutes, I'm going to be talking about some stuff that really requires you to know the rules of the game. If you're confused on what those are, you can watch my first Ultimate Tic-Tac-Toe video. Let's begin by creating a truth table for a single piece on our local board. You see that we have nine lights to control in this segment, so we'll need nine separate expressions for this piece. To make things simple though, let's start with just the top left pixel. The first step to creating a truth table is to figure out what the inputs are. I said it in the first video that each piece will have four inputs, two for just that piece, and two for the entire local board. Let's just look at the individual inputs right now. Okay, with our two inputs, which I'll call C and D, we can begin creating our truth table. I'll write these on the left. We'll need to write every possible combination of C and D to show what the output will do in each possible state. Now we can write the output here, which I'll call 1, since it's the first pixel in this 9 pixel piece. Before I start filling in numbers, it's important to know what these inputs even describe. To begin, when C and D are both off, the entire piece should appear off. At the start of the game, when nothing has been played, every piece should be in this state. I'm going to say that if C is off, but D is on, display an X. If C is on and D is off, display an O. This is actually the, all the states that can be displayed in our board, so we can say that if C and D are on, this is an invalid state and should never happen. These states were picked by me. When I develop the other circuitry to talk to the display, it'll also know what each of these states mean. Okay, now that we know what each of these states should display, we're ready to finish the table. Let's start here when C and D are off. Well, we said that nothing should display, so we could fill in a zero or off. In the next state though, things get interesting. If you can imagine how the piece would display an X, you can see here that pixel 1 would need to light up. This means that in this state, the first pixel would need to be a 1 or on. Next we have the O. Here pixel 1 would need to light up again, so we can write in a 1. Lastly, we have our invalid state. It doesn't matter what the logic gate outputs when the outputs are both on, since they should never both be on anyways. So we could just write a dash to mean not applicable or doesn't matter. Let's add in the other two inputs. These are the global board inputs and are quite simple to describe. If the first input A is on, it says to override the individual inputs and display a big character instead. A big character would appear if a local board is one, as shown here. The second input line, B, says whether to display an X or an O. Off means an O, and on means an X. Yes, this is reversed from the individual inputs I was talking about before, but I already made the logic and I'm not doing it again. We can add these inputs into our table. To cover all the new states, our table had to quadruple in size. Don't worry though, as it's not nearly as bad as it seems. The next four states are actually all invalid. This is because the X or O selector bit will never be set on when the global board bit is not. We can therefore mark all these inputs as invalid. Now, this is where things get a little complicated. If the A bit is on, we can ignore the C and D bits. Now, depending on whether B is set or not, either the piece will display part of the picture for a big X or a big O. We can look at when B is off, which means that we should be displaying part of a big picture for an O. Here you can see the full picture of what that might look like. That means our first piece should display this reflected L shape. This means our first pixel we need to be on. We can write that in for the states when A is 1 and B is 0. Similarly, we can see that the first pixel in the first board is on if a global board X is being displayed. We can fill this into our table as well. Technically, we should declare these two states as invalid because both C and D are on, which we said should never happen. Removing these, we get our full truth table. Now comes the hard part, simplification. We need to somehow convert these input and output combinations into a logical system. Enter Boolean algebra. Yeah, it doesn't sound so cool, but we desperately need it here. I'll give us a way to convert the table into a system. The first step is the easiest. Write out all of the combinations of inputs that give you a one as an output. We'll begin here by seeing when that A is zero, B is zero, C is zero, and D is one, the output is active. We'll write this as A prime, which just means when A is not one, B prime, C prime, D. This means that when A is zero, and when B is zero, and when C is zero, and when D is one, turn the output on. We need to do this for the remaining combinations as well. We'll write a plus in between each combination, because we're saying when this or this condition is met, the output should be one. Here are all the combinations laid out. The next step is simplification. That involves looking at this handy dandy cheat sheet that shows all the simplification rules and following it. I would show you each step of my simplification, but honestly, once you have the string I developed, you can just throw it in an online calculator and it'll give you a fully simplified result. For this pixel, this is the simplest equation that can represent the logic. 
If A or B or C or D are on, the output should be on. We can see here that this holds up, so we can create this in game now. I'll save creating the logic in game for the next episode though. Right now I have 80 more states to solve for. Each global board uses the same logic, so we can make the logic for one board and use that on the other eight. The problem is that with each local board, all nine pieces need unique logic. On top of that, each of the nine pixels needs unique logic. This gets the total to 81 unique boards. Here I finished all that up. You can see here each of the nine pixels, and on the bottom you can see each of the nine local boards. This wasn't terrible, but it did take a few hours to knock out. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss my building of the combinational logic. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask below. Until next time.